Well, hello and welcome to this session. What I want to talk to you about today is the estimation of consequence in the risk management process. I've seen many organisations who tend towards the worst case in terms of their consequence. So the common one that I'm, I'm confronted with, with is somebody has a trip or a slip or a fall in the workplace and the organisation will say, well, they could hit their head on a table, which would you know, mean that they end up with a, um, a, a really bad injury or in worst case, they, they could die. Now, the trip, slip and fall itself is the event. By bringing a table or a third object into it, you have done exactly that. You've brought a third element into it. If you go towards or tend towards the worst case with all of your assessments for consequence, what you're actually doing is reducing the credibility of the risk management process and the program in your organization. Because if you do that, all of your consequences are going to be in that higher level. And with a higher level of consequence, regardless of the likelihood, you're still going to end up with a lot of risk in that top right-hand corner of your matrix, if, if that's the sort of matrix that you're using. Now, the way that I look at it, and the way that you should look at it, is to look at what is the most plausible outcome. What is the most plausible outcome of that particular event occurring. And we do that against all of our critical success factors. So to give you an illustration, if we had 100 people have a trip, slip and fall that resulted in an injury, about 90% of those are going to either have an ins insignificant consequence or a minor consequence. You might have a few that have moderate, i.e. they break a, a wrist or something like that, that may require hospitalization. You might have some one that is actually quite major. But out of that 100, it's very, very unlikely that you're going to have somebody die, i.e. a severe consequence. So the most plausible outcome here is somewhere in the minor insignificant area. Now, if we look at it and say, in most organizations, it's almost certain that we're going to have a trip, slip, or a fall over, let's say, the next 12 months. Well, if we've got almost certain and severe in our, in our risk matrix, then that actually makes it an extreme risk or a very high risk, depending on how you word it. So that means that we really need to do something about it. But what can you do? Short of putting pillows around all over the floor or wrapping people in bubble wrap so they don't get hurt as they fall. I mean, it's not something that you can actually influence. So what we want to do, and it goes for every critical success factor, as I said, look at what is the most plausible outcome for that event. So the way I do it, I look at the event, I look at the critical success factor area, and I say, what is the most plausible outcome of this particular event in relation to that critical success factor? What is the most plausible outcome from a reputation perspective? What is the most plausible outcome from a compliance or regulatory outcome? And once we've done that, we have a much better understanding of the risk and whether it needs to be treated or not. If we tend towards the worst case on all of our consequences, we are going to treat a lot more risks than necessarily needed. And that is going to consume resources, as I said before, reduce the credibility of risk management in that organization and probably render the, the framework useless. So the, the lesson out of this or the, the message to take away is ask that question. What is the most plausible consequence against every critical success factor? And you will get a much better outcome for your risk management program. That's all for this session. As always, Let's be careful out there.